Let's discuss how to answer question number four of the English language paper two exam. Now, for this question, you have to compare both source A and source B, talk either about differences or similarities in writers' ideas and perspectives. However, also within this question, you need to talk about methods that both writers use. So you want to use a mix of language and structural techniques to support how the writers convey either the similarities or differences when it comes to the ideas and perspectives on a given issue. Now, with this question, obviously what I want to do is to show you how to write a perfect paragraph response to this. Okay, so this is a perfect full mark, grade nine, pure paragraph response. But the great thing is that because you know how the layout of this question will be for every single paper two exam, I'd like to challenge you when I'm going through my model response, okay, so this is the model paragraph to try and use these elements and apply them to other questions okay don't only see them as related to just this particular paper because we're going to be looking at how to write a perfect response for the 2020 exam this is a mountains exam however see this answer is a little bit more broad the way i start try to apply that to other answers the way i develop my evidence try to apply that to other answers same goes for the explanation as well as the links so as i mentioned we're going to look at how to tackle and write a four mark paragraph a grade nine response to question number four of the mountains exam this is the one where we've got joe who's got his broken leg in source a with Gertrude and her guide Marius in source B, the Victorian source. Now the question itself always asks you to compare both sources, okay? So there's quite a lot of heavy lifting you have to do because you've got to talk about both sources and need to make sure that you're consistently comparing both source A and source B throughout your response. So how does that look like? The question is, compare how the writers convey the different feelings and perspectives on the adventures on the mountains. Now, let's think about the keywords within the question that you need to make sure you're answering, okay? So the keywords are of course different. You can't talk about similarities. You have to focus on the differences and it's how the feelings as well as the perspectives are different when it comes to the adventures on the mountains. I would suggest my preferred paragraph framework is the Peel Paragraph Framework. This is point, evidence, explanation, link, make it easy, make it simple. However, of course, when you go through each section, you delve into a bit more detail. So let's have a look at how I open the first P in my Peel Paragraph, which is my point in blue. It is clear that the authors of source A and source B diverge, which means different. They diverge significantly as Joe regrets his adventure, yet Gertrude appears triumphant. Remember that Joe, Joe relates to the name of the author of source A. And of course, Gertrude is the name of the author in source B, but I don't stop there. I add an additional sentence. Joe appears sorrowful about his adventure on the mountain. However, Gertrude sees scaling the mountain as an accomplishment. So here I'm talking about these adventures on the mountains. That's my opening point. I've made really, really clear that I'm comparing the main differences between the two. And I'm constantly juxtaposing and contrasting how does Joe in source A feel about this adventure versus Gertrude in source B. He feels miserable and regretful. Gertrude feels really happy and triumphant. That's my opening point. However, let's now look at my evidence. So I'm going to juxtapose and compare both source A and source B. Whilst Joe's dot 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 optimism evaporated. So I've used ellipsis to show that I'm referring to the rest of the sentence, but I'm only going to quote one specific part. Gertrude felt dot 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 complete satisfaction dot dot dot. So I've used two bits of evidence from both source A and source B, but I don't waste too much time writing out reams and reams of writing and evidence from both sources. Now let's look at the explanation. Okay, so now this is where I'm going to go into methods that the authors use. The author of source A uses this simple sentence. This is structure to disclose to us how regretful he feels as his adventure in Peru seems to have no ending. So I've started off by talking firstly about source A and I've used a structural technique to convey how he feels about this adventure. But I don't stop there because I have to talk about source B. Whilst Joe wants to end what he sees as a misadventure, misadventure is the opposite of adventures. Anything that's a misadventure, it's like an adventure that kind of goes wrong and, or just a really horrible journey, okay? So whilst Joe wants to uh, end what he sees as a misadventure, Gertrude uses a declarative sentence, and now I'm relating to a structure point in source B, to emphasize her triumph at climbing the Alps, okay? So I've started off with what 
uh, Joe Simpson feels, and I'm using simple sentence which is structure, then I juxtapose it with declarative sentence for Gertrude Bell, which again is structure. I've not ended there, I now add an extra sentence. It is clear that this was a rare achievement for many women during her time. So I'm basically saying Gertrude Bell feels really happy and she views her adventure really, really positively, right? So she feels really, really happy because this is also probably a really rare achievement for women at her time. This is now me going into an analytical depth. I'm thinking, okay, this was written in the Victorian era by a woman who climbed the mountain. This wasn't something that probably women commonly did during the Victorian era. So I'm using a little bit of analysis here that goes beyond what's just there at face value for me in the text. Now, this is how you end your appeal paragraph when comparing both sources. Thus, both writers convey different perspectives and feelings on their adventures, linking it back to the key words in the question. Joe seems regretful and downtrodden, so that's source A, whilst uh, nevertheless, Gertrude appears victorious when she reflects on her adventure. So here I've ended off simply by relating it back to the question but equally mentioning the keywords from the question to illustrate the differences between the two and how they generally feel. So as you can see in question number four, what you always need to do is when you're talking about both sources and you're doing comparative writing, you can't just write one paragraph about one source and then another paragraph about another source. You try to enmesh them a little bit. You try to include them within the same paragraph. My suggestion is use the pill paragraph structure. Start off with comparing source A and source B in your point. Source A and source B evidence in your evidence bit. Source A and source B in your explanation where you talk about methods either language or structure and then source A and source B in your link back to the question. So that's really it when it comes to answering question number four of language paper two.